elect of the United States of America, Donald Trump. The year could be remembered for lots of things. The British people have made a very clear decision to take a different path. Well, Lenin said there are decades when nothing happens and then weeks when decades happen. It was the year that globalization went into reverse. And the nation state reasserted itself as the governing concept of choice. After decades of walls coming down, it was the year of barriers going up. We have to build a wall, folks. We have to build a wall. A year that nationalism and naked tribalism reasserted itself too. They also want to fight for the preservation of our own identity. Does hate arise out of fear? And is that what's being expressed? A year of anger and division. Shame on you, Boris! You're parasite, Boris Johnson! A year that traditional politics and its parties began to fall apart. Owen, you know perfectly well what the answer is, that I voted Remain, and I'm very surprised okay. and actually quite disappointed that you should even raise this question. The year the truth became stretched and political communication changed. You brag that you have sexually assaulted women. Do you understand that? No, I didn't say that at all. I don't think you understood what was said. This was locker room talk. Whether you like him or not, and I don't, you know, he is clearly an incredibly talented 21st century communicator. People will expect that from their leaders after 2016. For me, 2016 has been something of a blur. Not just a sense of events overtaking us, there haven't been that many events, they've just been rather important ones. More a sense of assumptions changing. For many, it's disorienting, and they reach out for historical parallels. Some reassuring ones, or some obvious and rather dark ones. The most commonly cited comparator is the 1930s, and it's easy to see why. You have uh, outsider parties or outsider movements that arrive on the political scene saying we're not the same as the other people, we're different, we're going to sweep away systems which are not working for ordinary people. And that becomes enormously seductive um, to people who do feel either that they've been left behind or that their voices are disregarded. It wasn't just the Nazis. Italy, Spain and Portugal all had their fascists too. There was Oswald Mosley in the UK, and the left-wing populist Huey Long over in the US. Those outsider parties have been relatively contained in Western democracies since the end of the Second World War. But now they're here, and they're here and we're very worried about them. The 30s can also be remembered for a US-led tariff war disrupting trade, adding to the disintegration of international cooperation. But I also think issues are very tricky at the moment in terms of, of, um, of the breakdown of what have been very, very secure international organisations, especially the EU, NATO, for all its faults. And these are seem to be under great pressure. And if you lose the structures of international collaboration, such as they are, which allow people to think collectively or allow them to think internationally, then um, it is lost. And I think, you know, in the 1930s, internationalists were very, very difficult to find. A vast pro-Nazi gathering carrying on the pro-Nazi campaign of back to Germany. But historians are never keen on glib comparisons, particularly to the 30s. By reaching for the most familiar piece of history, we can miss other parallels. Well, we've got to be very careful of this 1930s comparison. I mean, the fact is, it's the only history that's taught in our schools. So the, one of the reasons it's, everyone's mentioning it's the only history anyone knows anymore. This isn't fascism. Um, there are no um, militarised, paramilitary organisations, um, as there were in the 30s, that really characterise the 30s. You know, there, there aren't stormtroopers. There aren't black shirts. Um, things, things are very different today. This is actually, in many ways, the working of democracy. The working of democracy in the sense that... Well, one of the great things about democracy is that it reflects the differing views of the voters and they can make changes, radical changes, without, um, without having to, to, to turn to revolutionary violence. And one of the roles of the media has got to be not to indulge in hyperbolic Hitler spotting. 
perhaps then the year should be seen as one in which the elite were overthrown. I don't think it's so much the, the 1930s. I mean, perhaps the 1830s is a better one. Then you had Prince Metternich, um, the Chancellor of Austria, and a group of um, like-minded monarchs and statesmen actually deciding what was good for Europe for 30 or 40 or, or 50 years. And they believed, a bit like the EU elite today, that they were, um, they were absolutely right. It was, it was, it was, it was, there was no other way but their way. And, of course, gradually bubbling under was a resistance to this. So maybe the 1830s instead of the, the 1930s. It's hard to make sense of 2016, the end of one kind of order, but we haven't yet seen the construction of a new one. Two or three times in a life, you get a year that is a junction in the course of history. And I think we've just had one. We were at a kind of confusion of different directions. And that explains many of the contradictions we're seeing. Donald Trump, getting the support of American conservatives. Even though he isn't a conservative, he's an economic interventionist. Brexit, apparently a protest vote against globalization, and yet the Brexiteers say, we're gonna now become a beacon of global free trade. We're all over the place at the moment. It's a complete mess. And that perhaps suggests there are useful parallels to be drawn to those messy historical upsets that come along every now and then in the form of revolutions. Lenin would definitely have recognised this as a revolutionary moment, and he would have found a way of seizing upon it. Revolutions happen when assumptions that generations have, have had for a very long period have broken down and people no longer believe in them. And we're seeing that very much in 2016. Russia, of course, had two revolutions in 1917, one overthrew the Tsar and all the old assumptions. It was the second, months later, that saw an opportunistic Lenin grab power. He promised people everything and anything. He lied unashamedly. He, he identified um, a scapegoat that he could then blame for everything. He used the word elite a lot. He said people had not really had, had heard too much from experts. One feature of the current situation is not just that events are unpredictable, but that you can get perverse outcomes. Democracy has its foibles, and the public can get things that perhaps they never really intended. You can have a binary vote, very evenly matched, that then leads to quite an extreme outcome. Now, public preferences are quite complicated things. We all want the public to have their say, but the challenge is to reduce that down to something simple while capturing some of the nuance and to make sure that in the process, the public do get what they really want. Can the outcome sometimes be very perverse? That there's a sort of, the intended outcome for the revolution is not where the revolution ends up. Yes, I mean, one very obvious one is the French Revolution, well, one of the most famous of them all, when they wanted to get rid of um, a king and they ended up ten years later with an emperor. When Hitler was called to become chancellor in January 1933, he was intended to be the puppet of right-wing conservatives. And, of course, within weeks, he was out of control. So there's an unintended consequence of a major, major sort. 1830s, 1917, 1930s, each history has something useful to say. But none can really tell us where 2016 will lead. I don't think you've had the revolution yet, Evan. I mean, I think if the revolution is coming, we'll, we'll know about it. It won't just be two unexpected elections. This is not 1917, ladies and gentlemen. This is the year that democracy actually spoke. Come back in 100 years and I'll tell you about uh, 2016.